Harry, uh, I always like having you here, and you and I have talked uh, many times about many things. I'm going to throw one at you that we haven't talked about, uh, and I don't have too many specifics other than that Illinois uh, has always uh, produced coal down in the southern sector. And uh, we recently had a, a guest, a Huffington blogger, a, uh, a writer for Huffington, and also a, an author, uh, Jeff Biggers. And he uh, is a very impassioned fellow dealing with uh, mountaintop removal down in Appalachia. He also comes from southern Illinois, even though he grew up in Arizona uh, and has a lot of relatives down in, uh, in southern Illinois and talks a lot about coal. What is the status or the state of the coal industry in Illinois, uh, how much of it is being produced, where does it get used, uh, what's the quality of our coal? I'm just curious about coal in Illinois. You know, it's uh, what, what, there are things when you're I know you're going to be an expert to learn on about it. stuff. So I, I mentioned lead poisoning before I went to Springfield. I had no idea about the problem. I've learned about coal, and I, uh, one of my colleagues is a former coal miner. So um, Illinois has a significant coal mining industry, and um, uh, it's southern Illinois, uh, but it's a lot of jobs for our state. And one of the challenges is that um, with federal guidelines and state guidelines, we're trying to clean up the coal industry so that the, the coal that is produced in Illinois um, and, and is refined in Illinois uh, it meets or exceeds um, you know, uh, standards for clean coal production so that our air quality isn't going to get um, you know, ruined more than, uh, than, it, than it currently is uh, under the previous president. So, um, but it, it, you know, we, we, um, we export coal throughout, throughout the country, and I think outside of certain parts of, um, certain parts of the West, um, I think Illinois is one of the largest coal producing uh, states in, the, in our country. Uh, actually, this, this fellow, Jeff, Jeff Biggers, basically was very critical of Durbin. And Durbin is, uh, you know, tends to be one of the more progressive uh, senators we have. He's not real progressive on the coal issue. And I understand the, the conflict of interest when you have a constituents that are, uh, have a vested interest in the way things are. Any comment on that? Or are you going to let? It's absolutely. Uh, I, I don't want to comment on Durbin specifically, but I'll tell you that there are tensions, um, which is typical on a lot of things. I mean, if you, there are parts of uh, Illinois that are closer to Atlanta, Georgia, than they are to Chicago, and um, you know, Southern Illinois. There's some beautiful country down there, but um, there are cultural differences that we have, and. Um, Coal is one of those things where, you know, myself and others are working to clean up Lake Michigan and clean the environment, <laughs> and we run up against a couple downstaters that their focus is to keep the coal mining industry um, as unregulated as possible. So we got so, trade-offs going well, on. Well, I don't want to say we have trade-offs, <laughs> know, but we have priorities, and we uh, we try to work things out the best they can. So I think that um, there are some positive steps that have happened over the last couple of years about um, regulating the refinery of coal in Illinois, um, but I think there's a lot more work that needs to be done. Uh, let's shift to the medical marijuana issue. Okay. Uh, Illinois uh, was, seems to be talked about as uh, perhaps on the verge of becoming, I think, the 14th state. You're the 14th district rep. Uh, the 14th state to uh, go for medical marijuana. Uh, most recently, there was a close vote in the Senate where uh, the, the bill passed. It went to the House. Can you tell us what happened and what happened? It didn't. It didn't well, go forward. Let me say this: there, there are moments in Springfield that are sometimes uh, exciting. And um, <laughs> when the vote was happening on medical marijuana and the issue of medical mar using or legalizing mar medical marijuana has been around for quite some time. And um, when the Senate took the vote, I was on the floor. I was over talking to our Senator Heather Staines, and um, the bill went up for a vote. And the uh, the president of the Senate was calling for the vote, and it was stuck on 29. You need 30 votes to pass the bill. As she called and said, will the, will the, the clerk um, finalize the vote, someone switched to 30 at the last minute, and it, it passed. So it was a very interesting uh, uh, event. The bill now is in the House of Representatives, and um, you know we're on a two-year um, legislative cycle, so we're going to take this issue up. Uh, in our next legislative session, and there's going to be a lot of advocates that are going to come and uh, talk on, on why we should support it. There's been a lot of people in my community that have reached out to me. Actually, one of my neighbors, uh, who will get, go nameless, um, who has some medical conditions, uh, you know, brought it to my attention e yesterday. Uh, but we have people that are living with HIV and AIDS. We have people that are living with cancer. And a lot of these people um, 
are looking to see if we can have legalized marijuana as a way to kind of um, ease some of the suffering that they're going through as they deal with chemotherapy and things like that. So I'm in support of that, and um, I think that it's uh, the right thing to do. And um, I think over time we look at things differently. So, so it's going to come back up in the fall. In the fall or uh, next January in our legislative session. So. And what would you, uh, if you were a gambling man, what would you uh, think? How do you think it's going to go? I think it, I think it's got a real good chance. I think it's got a real good Will chance. Will the Senate stay, or does that have to go through the Senate again? If it's amended at all, and I haven't, you know, I don't know that it will be amended. It would have to go back to the Senate. But I think uh, I, I think it's going to come up for an up or down vote. Um, so, and I want to kind of segue, if I can, talking about the medical marijuana and, um, and dealing with kind of uh, health issues. Is tomorrow, um, June 7th at Loyola University, uh, I'm sponsoring a women's resource fair for the Northside women. Um, and what this is is um, we have some exciting guest speakers, including our Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, um, Kelly White, who's the director of the Chicago Foundation of Women, are going to be our keynote speakers. But we've got um, three hours of breakout groups to focus on issues affecting women um, in our city and, and on the north side, issues dealing with early childhood development, um, how to find a job, uh, how to manage a budget at home, um, dealing with women's health. We have some people that are going to talk about um, you know, well, women's cancer. So we've got a whole range of issues, a lot of real quality speakers, and um, I would welcome everyone to join us. It's going to be at Loyola. Um, right at the corner of Devon and Sheridan Road in the uh, Galvin Auditorium uh, from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Uh, going to have a lot of information. A lot of our community providers are, are going to have tables there. So um, there's going to be a wealth of information um, on issues that affect women in our community, and I uh, would welcome everyone to come out and join us. Uh, that, I was going to ask you about that, and you jumped me, but that's good. Uh, the 2009 Northside Women's Resource Fair. Uh, how did this come to be? Uh, it's a it's a great event. Uh, is this the first time? It's the first time. It's the first. I time. know it's going to be a great event. It's going to be a great event, and uh, my <laughs> staff has done a phenomenal job. And we have a advisor group of people. And Loyola University has been an outstanding partner in this. And um, we have panelists that are going to speak on all these different issues: how to start a business. Um, one panel is uh, how to be a green mama, and we have some people from Rogers Park to talk about, um, you know, how That's, to raise your someone kids. Someone should get that name for a song, Green Mama. Um, but you know. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, my mother died of ovarian cancer, and um, that's something that's always near and dear to me, how to uh, help on women's health issues. Um, you know, my, my wife is going to be one of the panelists to talk about um, family medical leave. Uh, so there's a lot of issues, and it's just something that uh, we want to bring people together. It's also a networking opportunity for, for women as well. So it's just... Uh, it's, it's something I thought would be a good idea. My staff pushed me on it, and uh, we're real excited, and we got some really top-notch people. Um, I'll also point out that on Monday, Congresswoman Chikowsky is supposed to announce that she's running for senator or not, so maybe we'll get a sneak peek tomorrow. So, What is your sense about uh, Jan's uh, decision on that? I think that? Jan is an incredible congresswoman, and if she decides to go, I'm, I'm all in to help her. And um, if she decides to stay, I think we're blessed to have a... Uh, a congresswoman who's going to do a phenomenal job um, in Congress helping Barack Obama. So I think it's uh, I think either way um, our community wins. So uh, we're all going to find out. Well, let's just pursue this a little bit. Uh, you know, the, one of the, Bobby Kennedy's son, who has been involved at the merchandise mart for many years, lives in the suburbs. Uh, sort of became a, uh, a cog in the wheel, or a, a you know messing things up. For there are a lot of people talking about running for the Senate. Uh, Janulius. Uh, Jan Schakowsky, uh, certainly Roland Burris is uh, still talked about, uh, you know, and uh, I'm just wondering what your take is on uh, Mr. Kennedy. I don't know Chris Kennedy. I, I know uh, the name. I know his That's family. I know his work. Uh, I don't let, know if he's me, been over here I'll, to the Heartland. I'll say this. So uh, I think that I think on a lot of different offices, it's going to be very competitive. I think that um, for for state races, I think it's going to be competitive. I think that um, we're going to see shortly people starting to announce, and I think that for U.S. Senate, we're going to have some quality candidates. For governor, we're going to have some quality candidates on through the, the ticket. So I think that you're going to see a lot of competition, which I think is healthy and, and good and um, will bring the best out of you know candidates and, again, have people engaged in the process.